Hey Nesters, welcome back to the channel. As you guys saw in the Thrift Along Me at Goodwill, part one and part two, I had a really good day thrifting. I found so many great things, some things to keep, some things to resell, and today I'm going to share those items with you. So you probably figured out for the most part what items I did pick up, but we'll go over them a little bit better here so you can get a clearer picture of what I did get and what I'm keeping and what I'm going to resell. If I am reselling it, I will have it listed up in either my eBay or Etsy shops. I do have those linked down below. If you see anything you like, you can go over and check it out and maybe they'll still be available when you head over there. So let's go ahead and get started and check out everything I picked up at Goodwill. So let's start with one of the more exciting items. Why not? And so we got the Empoli glass. They had this marked $15. It was a hand-picked selection. They had, someone had set it back down. So if someone had wanted it, I think they snagged it out of the hand pick section. They changed their mind and set it down and the regular side. But when I spied it, I was still excited about it for $15 in a very beautiful I would call it a teal like a teal blue and some green undertones it's in great shape and you guys know Empoli sells for a, a pretty good penny right so I would expect somewhere up in the $60 range for this piece I will be putting this up on eBay auction we'll see how it does a very beautiful piece. I'm tempted to keep it myself, but I'm actually keeping the other Empoli piece I found. So I will go ahead and resell this beautiful piece. Can you imagine this at Christmas time? How beautiful that's gonna look. I'm so happy with this find. So for the Empoli piece that I am keeping is this beautiful amber vase. Now, it would have originally had the little, like, candle-style stopper in the top. Did not have that. And I was thinking about, oh, maybe I'll buy one for replacement. When you look at replacements for them, the tops themselves even go for, like, $50, $60. So I think I'm going to pass on that, and maybe I'll come across one sometime in the future. But I don't mind it this way, and I might even prefer it this way, honestly. I think it'll look probably nicer without the top. In my collection I have a rainbow glass collection at the top of my hutch here and it's not all swung vases there is quite a few swung vases however but I actually try to collect different types of glass just in the different colors I like how they kind of look with the different styles and heights and shapes so I thought this piece would look fantastic when I first picked this up I wasn't exactly sure what it was I could tell it was quality and I was pretty sure it was vintage, but I wasn't 100% sure. And especially given that they only had it marked at $5. So I think they didn't think it was vintage either, right? And so some of you guys had told me it was in Poli for sure in my Thrift Along With Me, which I appreciate because I did look it up and I did find it and you guys are correct. So a wonderful piece, a really tall piece. I was looking for a tall yellow piece to go in my collection. I have a couple smaller ones and I'm very, very happy with this. So this one's going up on the top of my hutch. I might show you guys this at the end where I put it, okay? <laughs> All right, so two very awesome glass pieces to start out with. The next piece I picked up was this little peach basket. This is glass, it's in this basket weave. And I, I wasn't super familiar with this piece, but I was familiar with it enough to know that these do sell for at least $20. They had this marked at $5, so knowing that I could probably sell it for 20 ish dollars, I figured that was a really great pickup there. So should be able to make about $15 on this guy. Definitely beautiful for fall decor, right? And that beautiful kind of peachy orange color. I think that'll be a good item for this season. So next up, I did pick up this beautiful glass angel. I love that it had this bit of green at the center of it. I just thought that was such a neat look. It's a pretty solid piece of glass as well. So definitely quality. And I also like that the halo was one piece here. And I'm assuming when you put the candle, it probably helps reflect the light in a really nice way. 
Now, I'm not sure exactly the maker of this. I, I want to say it's Murano. I'm not for certain. I know Murano does have very similar pieces, but it's not marked or anything. And I know <laughs> you're not going to really find Murano marked either too often, but I just think it was such an amazing little piece. Perfect for Christmas time. I could not pass this up. I know Jocelyn, she just recently, in one of her recent videos, I saw her pick up something kind of similar to this. It was a larger one. I believe it was Angel as well, and it had the same top. So I'm going to ask her. I can't remember what she said that the maker was. So I'm going to go ahead and ask her about this piece and see if she thinks it's Murano. But she would know, right? She's pretty pretty big expert on the glass there, especially with Murano. So I'll ask her that, but I still think even Murano or not, it's a fantastic piece and I think it'll go for pretty good. So definitely wasn't going to pass that one by. So I found this really beautiful pottery piece. When I first initially saw it, I didn't see any kind of maker on it, any kind of signature until I had already purchased it. And then I did find a signature, which is really cool. And I'll talk about in a minute, but just looking at it, I could tell it was a really nice quality you got this beautiful little blue bowed lamb, right? And it's just a little planter here. Very well done pottery piece. Okay, so it's really, I could just tell it was quality. Then after I purchased it, I could see a signature up here. So it ended up being a hint or height. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, pottery piece. It is signed SK by the artist. And the height pottery, they actually sell really good. Now, they're not always planters. They make these really cool like figural pieces. They kind of almost look a little goofy, really. They're very, I guess, folk arty, but really fun pieces and they sell for really good. So I think I did definitely a good, a good thing picking this piece up. I think it's gonna sell pretty good. And they had this price at $5 and I, I think I'm gonna do really well on this piece. I think it's gonna go for $35 minimum. So this will be up on eBay. We're gonna see how it lands on an auction, but I just thought it was a very wonderful piece. I picked up the cute little delicate unicorn set. They are a porcelain and kind of super fragile, right? They're super delicate. I love that they were still in phenomenal shape and I just thought they'd be a darling little set for a little girl's room. So I wanted to pick these up. I thought they'd look wonderful on a shelf and you know, they don't have to be rainbowy colors as much, but you can still get the unicorn like whimsicalness, but not have to be, you know, too loud in your decor if you don't want to. Some people prefer the neutral decor and I thought this would be a nice little addition to that. So these were marked $2 each. So $4 for the set. I believe I'll put these up on my Etsy shop and I think they'll go for about $22 for the pair. So when I saw this piece, I recognized immediately the style of pottery it was, the way they did the painting, right? It just screamed Kimple because the Kimple has the little like quilted design in the pottery pieces. Usually you'll find them with the reindeer in Christmas, right? You don't typically see others too much but I found this cat and I was like that's got to be Kemple and sure enough it is Kemple and I just think it was so fun there's a lot of people that enjoy cats and I thought it would be a really adorable piece I love the color to it and I just thought it would look really cute in the little girls room as well and yeah I just thought it was really fun so it is a hand-painted ceramic piece it says to Tammy love Terry and just really, really fun. They did have $4 on this piece, and I don't think they go for particularly too much, but I think they will go for about 20 to 25. So we'll put this up on eBay and see where it lands. I also found my very first Bluebird of Happiness in the wild. Like I had said, I found them in antique malls before. I've never purchased one, however, and this was the first one I ever saw at a thrift store. So very cool. They only had $2 priced on it, and then it is signed on the bottom. I can't read the name, but the date is 1993. So looks like it's kind of etched in at the bottom. A really fun piece. Now, these do sell okay. I think I'm going to hang on to this one for now. Since I've never had one before, I think I'm going to enjoy it for a little bit. And 
it might go up for sale in the future but for now I'm gonna hang on to it and just kind of enjoy my first find here of the Bluebird of Happiness. So I did get some needlework pieces. I'm going to share with you a couple of the smaller ones I picked up. I did get the God Bless You cross stitch. I thought that was really wonderful. I do plan to keep this piece. You guys know I collect cross stitch. And being a Christian, this definitely is right up my alley. So I wanted to keep this for my own home. But the sentiment goes out to everybody, you know. <laughs> so we got that one there. I believe that one was like four dollars I already took the sticker off <laughs> and then I also got this really adorable one with a mother and daughter I love the colors to it it's very 1970s it has a beautiful green you know avocado green dress the yellow frame this will look wonderful on my wall I'm probably gonna add it to my little gallery wall over here in fact and it's just gonna go great with my decor so I was so excited about this piece absolutely love that I believe that one was $4 as well. So I do like to decorate my own home with 1970s style decor, but I also have a appreciation and love for anything kind of working farmhouse, like a true farmhouse. I like that antique farmhouse kind of cottage style as well. And I try to incorporate pieces into my home. I do appreciate what that particular style looks like. It is, you know, usually not as colorful as I like things. So, I don't decorate my home as traditional antique farmhouse as you know some people do, but I do think it's a really nice look. I just personally prefer the color. And I picked up this piece because I do have followers that like that style. I have lots of friends on YouTube that do that style, like homemade vintage. We have um, Board and Bananas. She kind of is probably more cottage, but she's kind of you know a little bit more neutral in that way as well. She does like the greens and some more neutral colors. But yeah, I have lots of friends that like that style. And this just reminded me of that in particular, this beautiful silver piece. It's a beautiful tray, it has lovely tarnish on it. You guys let me know in the comments if you would shine this up or if you would leave the tarnish on it. I just, I love the patina look. <laughs> Personally, I think it just makes it look so much more fantastical, right? I love the little feet on it. It's in great shape. So I wanted to pick this piece up. They were asking five for it, which I thought was totally fine. I do plan to resell this piece. I think I'm going to hang on to it for a live sale. I wanna kind of curate a live sale and kind of do a more antique farmhouse cottage theme live sale. So I'm gonna hang on to this piece for that, but I thought that was absolutely wonderful. I love the patina on that. So I actually haven't picked up a new trivet in quite a while. Usually I used to pick up a trivet at least every time I went, just like I am with books, right? And I finally found one that I was intrigued by. It was kind of cool because it has this like plastic hanger so you can lay it down like this to hang it up or if you want to kind of, uh, I'm not sure. I think you can kind of just use it as decor, like a stand like, Kind of like a picture frame like that, which is kind of neat. So it has Ireland on it. I do have Irish heritage, and I also thought this would look good for St. Patrick's Day. So at only $2, that was a no-brainer, <laughs> right? Really cool and yeah, a really great piece. So I do hang these up on my kitchen walls, kind of like a collection display. I do use them as well, but uh, yeah, I'll probably add it to my wall out there. doesn't necessarily have to be St. Patrick's Day to do that. So, but definitely could add it to a cute display when the time comes. So this next piece, I believe to be home interiors. I didn't look it up, but I know they make things like this. So I'm assuming it probably was. And so it's a cute little bunny family. This was $2. I do have a wilderness wall in my living room. I'm redoing my, uh, Gallery wall, we got a new couch, we got a new rug. If you're following me on Instagram, I had everyone vote in my stories on what rug I should get. And I just got that down, we got it ordered and it's it's cool, but it's a, it's a tend to be a little bit more pink than I expected. But once I get my uh, new coffee table, I'm hoping to thrift an older one, but when I get my new coffee table, it's gonna probably take care of a lot of that pink as that I don't like as much. And the outside is kind of like a green and yellow. So I think it'll be good, but I have a woodland theme 
<laughs> gallery wall on that wall. It's mostly like landscape pictures. I might add this because I have a few spots where there's little awkward small areas and I just thought this was so pretty. I love the sweet little bunny family. So if it doesn't fit there, I will resell it. I do actually think Woodland is something that you'll see coming up towards like Christmas winter time. And you're going to see this, you know, become a little bit more popular in decor. I think the wholesome, more wholesome decor is going to come back into style. And it's kind of like cottage core, but you know, maybe a little bit more antique farmhouse, I guess. So I think it's really going to come into fashion again. And such a sweet little picture. It's not just for Easter, right? Very, very cute. Oh, okay, so many good things today. I really didn't know where to start and I don't know how to keep going here, right? <laughs> the next thing I got was this really delicate yellow lace. I believe it's a tablecloth. They were asking $2. I actually didn't open it all the way up. I was just like, yes, this is beautiful. <laughs> so let's open it up and make sure it is a tablecloth. It appears to be, and I think it's square. Can measure it later, but I do believe it is square in shape and just absolutely beautiful. So this is gonna look really nice with a lot of different decor styles. It definitely screams spring to me just because of the really pale yellow, but I mean, you could use it for fall as well because I mean, you get the yellows in the fall. It's just so beautiful and obviously would look good with my decor if you'd like to do kind of that 1970s colors as well. But I was just thinking more along the lines of like a nice cottage, you know, very delicate, like farmhouse style. I thought it was really beautiful. You know, some people like to decorate farmhouse, but actually like to use color as well and incorporate color in. And I kind of had those people in mind when I picked this piece up. So I do plan to resell this probably in a future live sale. I'm starting to get buried in all of my items now. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's grab this piece here. This is fun, right? So this is a Teleflora cookie jar. Like I had said in the video, I was surprised to see that they made something other than like a vase or something for a floral arrangement. It was a first for me, but we got a cute little cookie jar here Put up by Teleflora Gifts. It has the gingerbread man on it. I think gingerbread, there's a lot of people that like to collect gingerbread or like to incorporate that into their Christmas decor. It's a little bit, you know, you don't find it as much. A lot of people go with the Santas, the snowman, but gingerbread men, I think, is a really fun touch and something a little different, right? So this was marked $4, and these guys sell, it looks about like $15 to $22. So I do plan to list this. It's I think it's almost safe to be listing Christmas up on eBay. So I think I'll probably go ahead and add that to my eBay soon. And I might put it on auction just to see how it lands, but really adorable piece. I really like that a lot. All right, so let's talk about some of the plates I end up finding to add to my little 70s floral stoneware gallery wall up here. I did get this one. This is a set of four for $4, so just a dollar each. This one's not marked. I did get a larger set. I'm not sure if that one was marked with the pattern. I'm gonna try to look that one up, but that's gonna look great up there. I will just be using one or the other. I didn't decide. I saw them both and I definitely wanted to pick them up because I love 1970s and 1970s dishes. I was not gonna leave it behind for sure. And I'll just look at the other one real quick to see if it has a pattern on it. I don't think it has the name. Oh, it does. So it's Cavalier Ironstone, Royal China Sunshine. So it might be sunshine pattern. I'm not sure if that's what it was, but it's marked really weird. Look where they had it stamped. <laughs> Isn't that odd? But they had these two larger dinner plates. Hopefully the bottom one's in good shape for $4. So I got the small one and the large one here. I'll try to decide which one I want to put up there. And I might resell the other ones in the future or just hang on to them and collect them because I do enjoy them. You can use them, right? <laughs> I also grabbed two of the Sierra Ironstone plates. Got this one here. These are made in the USA. And then the smaller version here. 
This one was two, this one was five. And I actually already have this pattern in just a smaller plate right there in the center. You guys see it? It's right there. So I'm not putting these on my wall. I just got them because I enjoyed I enjoy the pattern. I like that they were little serving trays and I'll probably just use them, honestly. So add that to my little collection of Kitchenalia. Really enjoy those. And the last one I found was the summer set pattern. These are made in Japan. I did not have this one yet. It's kind of a, more of like a bread plate size or maybe even a salad. It's probably more like a salad plate, right? So it's a little bit larger than some of my smaller ones up there. There's a set of four in that for $4. I've literally paid at least $5 for just one single plate at the thrift store before for my wall. So, you know, they had them together for four. It's definitely a good deal. Don't mind paying that. And I'll just, you know, collect the other ones or I could resell them in the future. Selling three might be a little odd, but, you know, so maybe someone else wants to do a gallery wall. And, uh... Could always resell on those ones to start up their own right so they'll go they'll get some good use somehow <laughs> they'll be loved all right we're getting there we have a few more items and then we have all those really great vintage children's books we're gonna go through so i did grab my potpourri press vintage usa 10 for two dollars you get the double handles here do you guys like these tens? I have a nice little collection of them. I still believe there's some I don't have, but even if I have them, I always pick them up because I just think they're so great. They're handy. I like to display them on during Christmas and kind of stack them up. They kind of look like little like presents, right? But they just have such great graphics on them and they're useful to store things in as well, so. Only $2 on this guy. I always enjoy the graphics. And you can tell these potpourri press tins very easily. They all, all their covers, it's almost like it's smooth to touch, but it looks like it's textured, right? You see how that is? So these are always easy to point out to me and I just enjoy them quite a bit. So a little fun collection. I don't think many people collect potpourri press tins, so I like collecting things other people don't and I really enjoy these. So next we have the cute little set of teacups and saucers. It's like a little child play set. $4 on these. They resemble Fiesta Wear. They're not marked by, you know, any particular brand. But when I saw them, I was like, they're like little Fiesta Wear. So they have this. This looks like I wonder if it would have had a lid originally. Like it might have been like a little sugar. Maybe it's just supposed to be an open sugar. Might be an open sugar, but a little creamer and sugar there. I don't even know if they're all, if it's all there, but we get the little orange cup. I think these are so cute. It literally looks like little mini versions of my, my own everyday wear dishes. So super fun. It does look like it's missing maybe a few pieces, but I think I can... I think I can still do something with these guys. We've got the two, a yellow and a blue cup there. And then there is a blue saucer that looks chipped, unfortunately. I didn't see that, but I still probably would have snagged it. It's got a little chip there, so. I still got a good few good pieces out of that for $4. These guys are good. Got a couple cups in these, so. I think they'll still sell pretty good. I'll probably do those in a live sale. Uh, maybe I'll do it up on whatnot. We'll see how they go, but I just think they're so adorable and uh, great for a little tea party set for a little girl or something. So very fun. They're cute for smalls too. You could probably just collect them and put them in one of those little like typewriter shelves when those look adorable. <laughs> some people like to collect miniatures. Some people, meaning me, I do. <laughs> I might hang on to some of these, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Alrighty, so we have a couple of the larger cruel things that I picked up. See if I can grab it without knocking all my glassware down. I did take out the glass piece in this. It originally 
had a really heavy glass and it was kind of falling out anyways, but I've talked about it before. I do not like glass over my pictures. I don't like the way light reflects off of the glass. So you look at your picture and then there's like this big, like, you know, white spot on it. And I just, I can't stand it. And I feel like cruel does not belong under glass. <laughs> and so is this upside down? It is upside down. <laughs> there we go. So we got the Noah's Ark cruel piece. Oh, I can't show this. <laughs> All right, so we got the Noah's Art Cruel piece here. Very large, was very happy with this. That pink is pretty, pretty bright. I could, could stand for that to toe down a little bit, but I still enjoy the piece. And I am going to be rearranging my, my uh, gallery wall over here soon because I got two other pieces. I got one piece I purchased from the Kitchy Cat here on YouTube, my friend Kathy who is also from Maine, go check out her channel. She's close to 500 subscribers. She's trying to get her community tab. So if you guys can go subscribe to her, that'd be wonderful. And I got a piece my mom had got me during the yard sale season. Have this one I wanna add as well. So I got to do some rearranging up there and those couple of those new ones, the smaller ones. So I think I'm going to do a video on that soon. Uh, I'm going to do my plate wall additions as well. I'll do that all in the same video. So if you guys want to see an update, make sure you subscribe so you can check that out. And then I also picked up this really cool owl needlework piece. Now this isn't cool. It's more like a rug of sorts. I'm not really sure what's going on with it. I do like this piece, but the frame's a little bit dark for me. I'm thinking about painting this either yellow or orange or maybe green kind of brighten it up a little bit. You guys can let me know down below what, what color you think I should paint the frame to kind of make this not be as dark. I don't, I have like kind of darker walls with the 1970s colors, but they're colorful, right? So I need this to go in my decor a little bit better. So I do need to do something with the frame, but I love the little owl piece and the nice kind of brown background. I think it's wool. It feels like it's wool, so very cool. I was very happy to find all of these cruel pieces and needleworks all in the same day. I had had such a dry run trying to find those and I used to find them a lot. And well, this was just a great day, wasn't it? <laughs> I was very excited about this trip. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this giant stack of books. Like they're right beside me and they go up to here. Just to give you an idea, I'm not gonna open them all up and talk about them too much. I'm gonna quickly go through them, but they were all 95 cents a piece. I did have someone ask me, how do I take the stickers off without ripping the books? Thankfully, most of the stickers at our Goodwill on the books, they kind of have this tab. And if you just kind of pull them up real slow and gently, you can get them off for the most part without tearing the book. But I do know what they're talking about. And I have heard some people will take like a hair dryer and just kind of blow some hot air over it a little bit to try to loosen up the glue. It is unfortunate because I think I have had that issue maybe a couple times, but usually it was like a yard sale sticker. But yeah, if you guys have any good ideas on how you get the stickers off, leave that down in the comments because there were people interested and you can really help them out. So yeah, that would be very helpful. The first one I got was stand back, said the elephant. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> I did have some people comment that they liked this book. It was one of their favorites. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I never heard of that one before. So I got that one there. Next one we have Turtles Flying Lesson. This one also looks very interesting to me. I'm very inquisitive about how this ends. I want to I wanna know what's going to happen in this one. <laughs> it's intriguing to me. So that one was 95 cents as well. This book was from 1973. The Bears Water Picnic. That one is from 1970. We have Twice Upon a Time. Looks like it was a little, is it a fox? No, I thought it was a fox. It's not a fox, it's like a prince or something. <laughs> and this one is from 1973. I'm just seeing somebody's name in here, Judy B. And it's in this one too. So this obviously all these came from the same home. Someone dropped off their large 
vintage children's books collection and it's really exciting because I plan to keep the majority of these and they get to stay together. I love when that happens. They were together all these years and they get to stay together. Now this one was really scribbled up on it. Judy, Judy was naughty and scribbled on her book. <laughs> but this is called, let's see, what is it called? Let's find out what's light and what's heavy. So a nice little educational book from 1961. Look at the graphics here. Really fun. She actually didn't scribble. There's a few small ones, but she didn't scribble inside the book too much. <laughs> she must have had this when she was real, real little, right? And this one looks like it's in that same line. This one is Let's Find Out About Summer. So look at the pretty graphics. I love that so much. <laughs> And then we got, what is this one called? The Adventure of Mole and Troll. You literally could just display these, right? On a little shelf, like a little ephemera shelf and just have it for decor. The illustrations are so wonderful on this. The little mushrooms, I mean, mushrooms are in. This is Judy's book too. <laughs> the mushrooms are in right now for sure. I've liked them for a while, but us millennials are really into the mushrooms. This is from 1972. Next we have, let's find out about policemen. These ones are pretty tattered at the edge, but the insides look really, really good. You know, the story is still there. The graphics are still in great shape. This one's from 1962. Seems like a lot of these are early 60s or early 70s. Now this is Peter on the front, so maybe this isn't Judy's book or maybe it is still Judy's book and she had a crush on somebody named Peter. <laughs> Frog and Toad are friends. And this one is from 1970. We have The Seventh Cousin sure what that one's about. This one might be a, a little bit older. Is it more like a chapter book? Yes, this is a little bit more of a chapter book. This is from 1966. Let's get turtles. And this was 1965 have some illustrations in it. This one is Little Bear's Visit. Nineteen sixty one on that. This is a Sid Hoff book. I have one in my collection. I knew he had several out there and I was really looking forward to finding the rest of his books and I know I got at least two today. So this is one of the Sid Hoff books I got. Who will be my friends? And this was Judy's book as well. <laughs> I love that she wrote her name in all of her books. It's so cute. This was 1960. This one is, let's find out what's big and what's small. So it looks like it's part of that other collection we just went over, almost had a whole series of it. This one was 1959, so really cute. And then we have Gregory, the noisiest and strongest boy in Granger's Grove. <laughs> this one's probably a little newer. Oh, it's inscribed. I love when people do this, when they gift books and then they write in them and then sign them. So it says Christmas 2016. Dearest Gregory, all they, because the little boy's name was Gregory, so they wanted to give it to him. That's cute. I love you in every way. This book is named for you, Aunt Sarah. Aw. I wonder how old this is. It's got to be older than 2000s, right? Yeah, it's from 1969. That's really sweet. Look at the graphics on the back. I love that. We have a duck duck. 
A nice little winter time read. 1971. Be nice to spiders. Great for October reading, right? This one is 1967. Here's my other Sid Hoff book. I was really looking forward to this one. There's a Christmas one I really want to get as well. So this is Danny and the Dinosaur. Nineteen fifty-eight on this one. I'm so excited! I found all these. I was like, "This is not happening." <laughs> Usually, I'll scan. I might find like maybe three or four, but I mean, my cart was already full of all this glass, and I started sending a couple in, and one kind of slid down onto the floor, like fell out of the cart, like where the, you know, that little thing that stretches out, like kind of slid down there. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start stacking them underneath on the little rack on the bottom. And I stacked it up good. <laughs> there was a lot of books. Mr. Biddle and the Birds. I wonder if it's like a alliteration kind of book. <laughs> Judy's book again. I love that so much. <laughs> 1971. This is one of the first ones I saw sitting on the top shelf. A Zoo for Mr. Muster. It's Judy's book as well. And it was 1962 in on this one. I really love the graphics. This is actually the very first one I saw, the Petunia. How wonderful are the graphics on this? Look at the back of the dog. I really, I look forward to reading this one. It looks fun. It's Judy's book as well. <laughs> Let's see, what is the age on this? It's probably the 60s. All of our other ones were like 60s. Ooh, copyright 1950. Wow. This is in good shape for 1950. Look at this. That's awesome. I'm excited for that one. I did get one of the boxcar children books. I like to collect these for my boys. I plan on reading it to them in a couple years uh, when they're a little bit older because they are mysteries and they might be a little bit scary in a sense for their age, you know, so I do want to wait for them to be just slightly bit, a slight bit older, but this one is number 20, The Haunted Cabin Mystery. I love those books as a kid, so I wanted to uh, definitely read those to my boys. Then we have, let's find out about Firemen. I wonder if her whole series, like if she had the whole series of those let's find out uh, books, because there's quite a few here. And this one was 1962. And the little fireman book. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see my face soon. <laughs> I have a few more to go. Let's find out about winter. So another one from that series. A little bit of scribbles going on, but not too bad. That one's 1963. This one also had really cool graphics. The little tiny rooster. I was excited about this one. You know, I have chickens. We have a little farm going on here. So anytime I find books like this, I get excited. By Will and Nicholas. Also Judy's book. <laughs> uh, let's try to find a date on this. 1960. Look at the illustrations. I scored big, 95 cents each, guys. Isn't that amazing? My husband actually found this book. Before I headed down there, he found this one here. Let's find out what electricity does. This one is 1961. We're getting there. I'm gonna be behind the book soon. <laughs> we have Little Toot. Little Toot. 
is from 1939. Wow. Already. That's awesome. So this book is from 1939. And it's still Judy's book. <laughs> Judy's book fell out. <laughs> oh no. It's only a few more. I think I'm going to make it. <laughs> This one is Inside, Outside, Upside Down, and it's a really old Berenstein Bears book. Look at that. So it has the Berenstein Bear authors down here. It looks like it's kind of part of like the Dr. Seuss series or something. It's kind of unusual to me. I've never seen such a thing before. This was from 1968. Did you guys ever hear of like the Berenstein Bears and Dr. Seuss kind of blending together like that? That's a first for me. I didn't know they kind of melded together. Did grab this Dr. Seuss book, the foot book. Look like an older addition to it. Judy's book as well. 1968. <laughs> I'm going to disappear in about three seconds here. Johnny, Johnny Lyons book by Edith Thatcher Hurd. I love that name, Edith. It's pretty. Yeah, this, this is also Judy's book. I think I got her whole collection. I'm kind of, I feel like obligated to go back and double check that I didn't leave any of Judy's books behind. I want to keep them together. <laughs> this one is from 1965. We made it to our last one. I'm not going to disappear. The big green thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what the big green thing is. It looks like it's some type of kite maybe. And this is from... 1963. The illustrations, it looks like they're black and white and green, like throughout the whole book. And that's really fun. I wonder if they did a series with each color with these books. I think, let me double check. I think that's everything I got. <laughs> that's it. Can you believe I didn't get very much, did I? <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching. I totally appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what I picked up was your favorite today. Just talk to me in the comments. Just comment on maybe some of the books you might have read. If you guys like to pick up vintage children's books as well. Yeah, just love to hear from you guys. And I'm going to have a live sale on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. That is my regular day to do YouTube live sales. So... You can check me out then if you guys want to just hang out and chat. That's totally fine. You don't have to feel obligated to purchase anything. We can chat as well. And yeah, I'll have another video on Friday. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.